I'm making a book and I was gonna, I thought I'd film a little bit of the process for you. This is the stage I'm at, everything is very loosely blue tacked. As you can see, but blue, actually it's pink tack. <laughs> I didn't know they did blue tack but in pink, but yeah. Pink tack. This is the book here. I know it doesn't look like a book at the moment, but hopefully it will. This is the double page spread in the middle, which is gonna fold open like this. I'll explain the book a little bit more in voiceover and like what it's for. There's like also a few like, um, extra bits which are like textured paper instead of just like the normal paper. I just want it to like have different paper types and be a little bit interactive. What I need to do now is work on the flaps. So this is like the very very rubbish mock book that I did which I've been using to help me like follow what to do and figure out where each page goes um, and there are these little flaps inside the book just like tiny pages that go inside with like a little bit of writing on so I need to cut them out. This is a big pile of stuff that I printed off. I printed off so much at uni um, just in case things went wrong because um, I'm making this book at home now so I don't have access to like a nice printer and once everything's figured out I'll be able to properly glue it down and then sew it together and then um, let me show you these were my mock books again like I said I will properly explain what this book is for um, in the voiceover just don't want this bit to get too long uh, these are like the mock books that I made I really like the like string I don't know what you call this thing does it have a proper name but like the string closure on this one and then you open it up and it reveals the books inside I really like this pattern as well this is something I drew I uh, made it so it was all fully pink and then it's made quite a nice cover so that was like the first attempt and then this was the second attempt although I'm going to do the the circle closure on that I'm going to do that on the finished thing because I prefer it but the finished thing is going to look more like this so it's going to have like a cute little case holding it together but yeah this is like my mock book it was just stuff very loosely stuck in these are all drawings and paintings that I did for my last project that I just randomly like stuck so it was just a mock just me trying to get an idea of what it would look like this is what the tracing paper pages will look like so it's like a little flap connected to a tracing paper page it's a bit hard to do with one hand but you get the idea yeah it's gonna look something like that and then this is the finished version which I spent many many hours on Photoshop putting together like each spread making it look nice it's gonna be really thick actually because it's already quite thick and that's just half of it so imagine this on top of that it's gonna be really thick and also imagine extra flat pages and then an extra cover so I printed it on quite thick card and because I you know what, I'll explain it in the voiceover anyway I'll get going and I'll chat to you in a bit. Okay, so I suppose I should actually explain what I'm making this book for. It is kind of like a final piece, like a summary of the project I've just completed. So for the past, oh, I'm not quite sure, is it, it's either been three weeks or four weeks, I've been working on this Bumbelina project, which you'll hear me referencing quite a lot in this video. Where it was this project where I was looking at the story of Bumbelina, that was like what I was responding to. Um, and I was kind of looking at uh, like Scandinavian traditional folk art, like tapestries as like my main inspiration. That's where a lot of the flower motifs came from. Um, and I was kind of merging the worlds of Bumbelina with this Scandinavian art, um, mashing it together to make patterns and story and you know, illustrations with a bit of narrative and how can I make ornamentation, like the, decorate, dec ooh, like the decorative part of Scandinavian art, how can I make that like come together with the story element of Bumbelina and how can I like merge them to make an even stronger like story world. That was the project, so I explored that for either three or four weeks, can't remember, and then at the end of that project we had a new project which was, right, you've done all this work, you've made lots, because like, for that project there was no final piece, it was just make as much work as you can, and at the end of it you're just going to have a big body of work, so then this project is like, right, you've made all this work, take a step back, what worked, what are your takeaways from it, let's kind of make one final book to show off all the best things that you've made for that project um, alongside we also had to do like a piece of writing for it it was like only like 1500 words piece of writing um so yeah like little snippets from that writing as well went into this book but really not that much it's summarizing everything like, well not everything i did a lot more than is actually in this, this book but this book um, is the best bits, like the highlights you look at this book as an advertisement to show off the best bits of the project you know the best bits of those four weeks 
the phone's ringing, sorry if you can hear that. So there you go, that's the book. I wanted it to kind of feel almost like a scrapbook of the project, so I wanted it to feel like really handmade, and obviously it is handmade, like sewn together, and I wanted to implement like different types of paper textures and like as you can see I'm like gluing in certain bits like it's not all printed just to have like that kind of 3D-ness texture to the book where you can see paper's been stuck in. I'll give you a proper flip through later on because I work on it more um, later on in the video. When I printed out this book I printed every single page on a separate sheet of paper um, purely because I was running out of time but if I had the time I would have like formatted the entire book in it's this thing called InDesign where you can format the book properly and then you can send it off to the print room that we have at uni and they print it off so it, the pages are double sided and um, basically it means you can sew the book together without having to glue the pages together like I did and it would just mean the book would be well first off a lot thinner <laughs> Because my book ended up being quite bulky because all the pages were double thick because I had to glue like each side of the page on um, but if I would have done it through the print room I wouldn't have had to bother with that what's done is done I basically it's because I was coming home for Christmas if you send stuff to the print room you have to wait a few days for it to get printed and I didn't have those few days to wait so I ended up just printed it myself on the printer and illustration that we have um, it still turned out good it just meant it was a little bit more handmade looking than it would have been if I would have done it got it printed properly anyway I'm sure you guys don't really care <laughs> how I printed it. Just a little bit of order packing for you there, why not shove it in? Yeah, that's all I have to say for this bit. I'll just quickly explain what I'm doing here. I'm making beads to hang off the side of the book because when I was sewing it together I had a bit of string at the side of where, where I'd sewn it um, and I decided to make little beads to hang off the edge just making these in air dry clay and I also had to make the what the thing that the string wraps around to hold the book closed. I don't know what you call that. But yeah, I'll just leave you with some music and hope you enjoy watching me make these bits and bobs. I'm going to do a little bit of painting this afternoon. I haven't done any, I mean, I was about to say I haven't done any art for ages, but I mean, I have been doing art. It's just been all these books that I've been making for the past few weeks. So it's been art related, but it's not been like drawing or painting. It's just been cutting, sticking, arranging on Photoshop, that sort of stuff. So I, I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to like drawing, yeah, painting, but I want to get back into it. Um, and I was looking, well, I was trying to think of what can I draw and I was going to just like sketch for a bit. And then I thought, I just kind of want to just get into painting, but I didn't know what to paint. So I looked back through all my old sketches that I did last month and I thought I've got some really nice sketches in here. Um, which I'm quite proud of and I thought why don't I just draw uh, paint them so um, I'm gonna paint this girl here this is my little Thumbelina and um, where is he and the mole I've got I've already got them traced out onto my paper so I've planned out the colors this didn't really take that long you just color in the shape and then you can just like use the fill bucket to quickly swap out colors until you find something you like Really happy with these. I've got my watercolours out. These are Winsor & Newton. Uh, on this side I have watercolours. 
and these are watercolours and then these here are my Winsor & Newton gouache. These are my alt new watercolours which I also really like so I kind of use these at the same time. So let's get painting. Doing these little characters, painting these little characters was honestly absolute roller coaster. There was ups, there was downs, there was a lot of downs and a few ups. Uh, I, I was just really struggling with it and I thought it'd be such a simple thing to paint because well, I mean, it's just a little character and I'd figured out all the colours and I'd already done the sketch. So I thought, oh, a nice, easy bit of art to kind of get me back into it. I've been, I've been not painted for a while. I was wrong. I spent about three hours on this mole. At the time, I hated it and I don't know what was going on. I think it's because in my head, I was going for a much more simpler style and I just, I always get carried away with detail and I act like that's a bad thing. Like, I'm not allowed to add detail, but sometimes just taking a step back and being like, you know what, with fresh eyes, I actually quite like it, but in the moment, it's like, no, this isn't looking how I want it to look in my head, but it's not like that's a bad thing. Also, oh yeah, so I painted this mole, then I was a bit disappointed with it, I went, I took a break from looking at it for the rest of the day, came back the following day, looked at it, and I was like, oh, you know what, I actually quite like it. Sometimes it's just like that. Like, on a, one of the my favourite things I painted this year, plus was last year depending on when this video comes out at the time i remember hating it but now it's one of my favorite things i've ever done you know crazy how that happens uh, anyway i thought you know what i actually quite like this mole i'll, I'll carry on and i'll paint little fumbling it now so i painted her and she turned out pretty cute and then i decided to paint a background hated the background absolutely hated it worst mistake but actually it wasn't a mistake because <laughs> Basically, because I did such a rubbish background, I didn't even include didn't even include the footage in the video because it was that bad. I decided to just cut the characters out because there was no saving it. Um, cut the characters out, and then you know I actually really like them now. They're kind of like cute little stickers, so kind of blessing in disguise that I did a bad background because cute little stickers. I would like to turn these into actual stickers, maybe for my next shop update because they are so cute. Um, and then you'll see at the end of the video, I end up including them in the book but you'll see that how that works at the end really happy with these guys although it was a struggle to get there also let me know in the comments if you would like these as stickers because i think they're really cute but obviously i'm a bit biased <laughs> so let me know how you feel about that treats we've been sent another box um from treats this is the third one we've been sent now we've had what we had Poland. Spi what was a spicy one? We've had Poland, Thailand, and now we've got Peru. Mm. This is a, a monthly subscription box where every month you get sent uh, another box of treats from somewhere in the world. It's a different country every month, so you never know what you're going to get. And I'll link it in the description. Whatever they are, mm. that's what they are. That, that, that's <laughs> more. <laughs> You bought nice. your box standard biscuit, yeah. Mm. The hand's back. <laughs> Does the hand want some? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do it. I get it. Go on. I think they've got a bit of a weird aftertaste. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a bit coconut, you know. Best one so far. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to re-up and eat this, won't I? <laughs> well, that one's broken at the bottom. There's no calories in broken biscuits. <laughs> oh. That sounds hard. Mm. It's got chocolate in the middle, but Oh, hold on. Well, it's <laughs> eating too, it. She's being greedy. <laughs> does, does the hand want the other bit? <laughs> does the hand want food? go in and go casino. Wow. Casino. <laughs> casino. <laughs> what are you doing? Close to me then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favourite, the, the peanut one. I really like that. Mm -hmm. It's that one, isn't it? Three, two, one. Thank you, treats. Thank you, treats. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Treat! <laughs> oh, you enjoyed that? Dad, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it, yeah. Cool. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs>so oh, if you remember a little bit ago in the video i was making all these clay little beads um well they're finally dry and i got around to sanding them it's quite a big job oh i'm losing one the plan is i need to paint these and then i'll show you what they're actually going to be used for this is the final book that i made when i was sewing it together i had this leftover string on the side and i was thinking of cutting it off but then i thought hold on wouldn't it be cute if i had like little beads hanging off the side of the book because i've done like a lot of clay stuff for this project and like there's a whole fold out spread showing all the clay stuff that i made i thought it'd be nice for there to be like a clay element implemented into the final book i'm gonna have these beads hanging off the side and then this needs like a clasp like this one um but instead of making it out of dashless cardboard the plan is to use this so i made this little shape and that's gonna go uh, there like that um but this is um this is the little thing to hold it up and then that'll go on top like that and then hopefully that'll work and the string can wrap around fumbelina i've made she's like broken up into three pieces so these are the little legs which i need to glue onto this so that's the body um, and then that's the head and you can see everything's had little holes drilled into it. My dad did that. So there's little Fumbelina and then I'm going to have just like these fun little shapes um, either side and that'll be hanging off the string and then that's going to be um, glued onto the front of the book so it can close. So I'll get painting them and then I'll glue them on and I will have a finished book and I'll give you a proper flick through of this. Okay, a little update because I've done some thinking and I think I've changed my mind. So basically I painted these and I, I wanted to go for something really simple and they are simple but I just don't think they really match because this is so such like a simple monotone sort of cover. I think it's weird that there's just colour here and also same can be said with this because this is all just like one colour I was thinking because it's going to be like poking out the side when this is on. It's just weird that there's a random bit of colour here and then I was putting this on on here and I really like the way it looks, like just the white, because I was going to paint this pink, but then if I paint that pink, then it's just too pink and it's not going it's, it's just, it's not going to pop out. It's, so now I'm thinking, keep this white because I really like the way the white like looks against this kind of darker background. And then these guys down here, it's a bit of a faff, but I'm going to sand them all again to get rid of the paint. I mean, it is just watercolour, so it comes off pretty easy. I'm having flashbacks to when uh, I painted the entirety of this um and ended up hating it and then i sanded the entire thing down again and it took me like at least three hours so it's not going to take quite as long as that these ones will be really easy to sand down it's just this with the with the arms it's going to be a bit tricky um, but i think it'll be worth it and then i'll just have the white beads on the edge because i just really like it, like how simple it is to just have white beads hanging off the side why do i do this to myself like i know this is fine but the perfectionist in me is like no 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 spend another half an hour sanding these again. Hello, just thought I would pop in at the end of this video to, to to round things up. I hope you've liked watching the process of me making this book. It was kind of like these were the final steps I'd spent 
an entire week before this video, well before this me ma making this book, um, just moving pictures around on Photoshop. I didn't film any of it because it's just boring. It's literally just hours upon hours upon hours per page, moving things around slightly, changing the colours of things. Oh, does this look nice up here? How about down here? What if I add this? Oh, no, I don't like that. What if I try this text? Oh, nah, not a big fan of that. And it's just that for hours and hours and hours and hours. So that was me for the past, actually, I think I did that for two weeks. I can't quite remember how long I spent doing that. Too long. <laughs> and it's nice for that to finally be done and to be finally be finished in this nice, tied up, nice and neat and finished book. And I'm final like additions of the little clay pieces. I feel like tied this book together so nicely. Um, and they were quite a light, a last minute addition. Like I wasn't going to add that and it just popped into my head. And I'm so happy that I did. And also the little Thumbelina and Mole in the back pocket, I think just ties it all together um, and kind of gives that back pocket a bit more of a use. Because before that, only really had that one kind of poster, fold out poster in, which is, I never actually explained that little poster that I pulled out, it's just a bigger version of a painting that I did, because in the book's quite small, I just thought it'd be nice to have that a bit bigger, because it is quite a detailed piece. I recently bought a bunch of new art supplies, a bunch of new paper and paints, which I'm thinking maybe I could do a little paint with me trying out all my new art supplies. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Uh, and oh also happy new year and I hope you also had a nice Christmas I've got lots planned for this new year but top of the list is just get for uni and finish it I mean, obviously I will, I'll film that for you guys as much as I can but with it being the final push of my final year of uni I don't know how much I'll be able to get filmed but as always I do try then after uni finishes we're talking in like March time now uh, then I can start hopefully putting a little bit more time into making these videos for you guys so you don't have to wait like three weeks in between videos. I hope that the channel's only gonna keep getting better because I really want to improve these videos and upload more. And uh, once the uni's out of the way, I'll be able to start doing that. Anyway, went, a bit, not, went on a bit of a tangent then, but I hope you've enjoyed watching and goodbye.